Hello everyone, it's Jamal Thomas. Welcome to the Progressive Soapbox. Coming up in 30 minutes, uh, 28 minutes actually, I have Eric Reitberg. He's going to be here for the Green Party of California, um, running for Secretary of State for the Green Party of California. Um, at 6 p.m. Eastern, I'm going to have Elizabeth Voss. She's going to have a conversation about WikiLeaks, um, specifically around Julian Assange and what's taking place with Julian Assange. That's assuming the weather holds out. The thing I want to talk about today, just before that starts, is CNN and media in general. CNN is trash. Mainstream media is trash. Their point of view and the way they look at the world is warped, to say the least. These people are maniacs. CNN, specifically this article. I mean, and I'm saying this from the Gaza thing because I'm thinking about that. That's on my mind, this thing of all of these people being massacred. You had 60 people being massacred. And in one article after the next, clash, clash, clash. There's no Israelis that were killed. You have one side that has nuclear weapons, one side that has guns, one side that has rockets and missiles, and the other side, maybe rocks, maybe burning tires. There was a dangerous baby that Israel essentially gassed to death. Again, I always say the irony between of, of that. The media looks at this stuff in a weird, warped way. And it's not necessarily indicative of a fair reality. It's more so indicative of who are our allies and what is our interest. So Saudi Arabia gets a pass, even though Saudi Arabia is out there murdering, starving Yemenis and weaponizing disease. Israel gets a pass, even though they're out there murdering Palestinians in mass. And so instead of saying Israeli massacre, Israel shoots 58 you know, snipers, you might hear stuff like Gazans die or Palestinians die. It's, it's weird and warped in the way the media talks about this stuff as opposed to just being open and honest and saying, yeah, they have a military occupation of that land. Those people are pissed off because of that military occupation. And in order to suppress that, Israel has used some pretty nasty and disgusting ways, including shooting into crowds of protesters who are unarmed, by the way. One of the other ones has to do with Gina Haspel. Bloody Gina, as her nickname is. Gina Haspel ran the black site for the CIA, essentially a torture program for the United States government. People being renditioned, grabbed from someplace, dragged, you know, blindfolded, not knowing where they are, beaten, abused, cold water being thrown on them, rectal fed in some cases. In some cases, they're talking about pureeing food and ramming it in their ass. Essentially, the person being raped by a United States serviceman. This was Gina Haspel. That was her. That was her responsibility. That's the thing that she oversaw. That's the thing that she was a part in. In fact is, if she went across the border, meaning if she went across the globe, she could potentially be prosecuted by the International Criminal Court for Crimes Against Humanity. That's how disgusting and repugnant this person is. And yet, this person very well will likely be head of the CIA. There were five Democrats that jumped on board in order to support the Republicans in putting this woman over the, over the finish line. The thing I want to get to, uh, because I've done multiple stories about Gina, bloody Gina, it's this part for CNN. This annoyed me to no end because I remember when they used to use terms like enhanced interrogation because the Bush administration said it was enhanced interrogation instead of calling it what it is. It's torture. If you feed something in somebody's ass, it's not medically necessary. You're doing it because you want to take vengeance or take, take it out on a particular individual who's in the process. They're breaking human beings, breaking human beings. And Gina Haspel is gonna be the head of the CIA and she's gonna be the person, she's gonna be the face for that organization with that track record and that history. CNN wrote this. Haspel faces opposition from a majority of Democrats and human rights groups for her role in the George W. Bush administration's interrogation program. Haspel has been criticized for supervising a CIA black site in Thailand where detainees were brutally interrogated as well for her role of the destruction of CIA interrogation tapes. Can you see my issue with this right off the bat? I mean, ultimately, it's not interrogation tapes. You're talking about torture tapes. And it's not critics say amounted to torture it was torture why are you whitewashing this 
Does CNN, with all of the resources at their disposal, with the capacity to go all over the world in order to get to a story, when they're not out there sniffing book bags of cases that are supposed to be some kind of chemical agent, now their journalists, bright and incompetent, don't know the definition of torture. Critics say, somebody else said it. You can't say it. Why can't you say it? You don't know what torture is. What's his name? Jeremy Herb. Jeremy Herb. Jeremy Herb apparently doesn't know what torture is. Jeremy, if a soldier, if some brute with a thick neck took a rod, cheat, uh, pureed your food, and rammed it square into your ass, he doesn't like you very much. He's not going to be gentle with you, but he's ramming this into your ass. Do you think that's torture, or are you being brutally interrogated? You are being brutalized. But is that interrogation or is it torture? I'm making a point there is a distinction in those things. Rectal hydration. These things are not necessarily med medically necessary. And we're supposed to believe that the guards are going to have this great esteem as they go about brutalizing and breaking human beings. Do you know some of this is just mounted to beating the shit out of the person who's there? Ramming their heads against the tables or desks or ramming their heads against the wall while their neck is tied up, t tied by rope. These people were disgusting. They were absolutely disgusting. And the idea that CIA can't call torture torture or, or that CNN can't call torture torture is abysmal. And it gets everything wrong with mainstream media encapsulated in that one paragraph. Your warped view of the world propagates these wars. This American exceptionalism nonsense propagates these wars. When you do articles and you can't say she was torturing human beings and enumerate what she was doing to these people when they were in these places. She was rectal feeding, she was pureeing food and ramming it in their ass, essentially raping the inmates. They were throwing cold water and wrapping those people in cold water so those people would freeze over the course of the night. They were beating the shit out of people. Some of those people died under those beatings. In one case, they were putting people in cramped, tiny little boxes and putting ants or, or, or vermin in those boxes in order to scare the shit out of the people in those boxes. It's torture. It's torture. Jeremy Erb, you might not be bright enough to know what torture is. Let me clue you in. It's torture. It's not somebody said it was torture. It's torture. If those people are going to own up for what's her name, for Bloody Gina, then call it what it is. She was a torturer, and we're standing up beside her as a torturer. Why are you fiddling around with the way that you're calling this? And why are you writing this in a way that doesn't necessarily enumerate how nasty and disgusting this woman is? And the fact that this woman is now likely going to be head of the CIA. What I will say about it is, if nothing else, it's honest. It's honest, and I don't mean CNN, I mean that woman being the face of the CIA is an honest representation of American power. Just like Donald Trump being president of the United States is an honest representation of what America is. All these people running around saying America is this, America is that, America is what America is. It's like somebody saying I'm rated 2000, but I play like I'm 2200. No, you are what you are. You are what your rating is. If that woman is head of the CIA, then that is the representation that the world is going to see, and that's the representation that the world should see, because that's honest. Just like Donald Trump, a reality show host, essentially an incompetent, unempathetic reality show host. As president of the United States. CNN is garbage. And until media can actually call a spade a spade, until they can say, Israelis are murdering Palestinians. This is a massacre. Until they can say, you know, Gina Haspel tortured multiple people or tortured all of these people, some of these people being innocent, and this is a list of things that they did to those people while they were under Gina Haspel's care. And then leave it up to the American public to make the determination whether rectal feeding, whether wrapping people in cold thing in order to make sure those people freeze up whether beating the shit out of human beings, whether banging people's heads on, on tables and pipes, whether those things amount to torture or whether those things amount to quote-unquote brutal interrogation. Call it what it is. I often ask the question, is media complicit or incompetent or some combination of both? I am pretty sure that Jeremy Herb knows goddamn well that this is torture. And for whatever reason, 
he makes the choice overtly not to call it such. CNN is whitewashing what how ghastly this woman is. And this is the problem with media. Not being honest in the perspective that it gives the American public. The filter that it's using to see the world is not it's not the best filter in the world with which to give the public an honest perspective of what is taking place. A disgusting, repugnant person is now heading the CIA, who you can make an argument is a criminal organization in and of itself, with the help of five Democrats. And CNN, to his credit, can't apparently, or doesn't know, what torture is. I'll leave it at that. I, I remember the whitewashing of the Bush administration where he would be ripping people apart, torturing. Hell yeah, I said waterboard him. And everybody focuses on this waterboarding thing. It goes beyond waterboarding. It goes beyond waterboarding. I'm to believe by reading this article that if Jeremy Erb ass was put into the sky, somebody was feeding a tube into his ass, that Jeremy Erb wouldn't necessarily think of that as torture. He would just think of it as being rough interrogation. It's nonsense. It's not enhanced interrogation. You're brutally raping somebody. And you're doing so under this guise of some kind of policy or some kind of enhanced interrogation. It's nonsense. It's rape. Call it what it is. It's torture. CNN is pathetic. The fact that CNN can't call it what it is. I'll leave it at that. This one is going too long. I didn't want this one to go all that long. But it is aggravating to me to read a story where you're like the guy is dancing around trying not to call it what it is. And he himself is not apparently bright enough to have a perspective on what's taking place. When I call you stenographers, it's because of stuff like this. Critics say. New critics say it now. What's the truth? What do you say? What do you say? It's not about what critics say. What do you say? With all of the millions, with all of the reach, with all the resources that you have at your disposal, what do you say? Stop whitewashing. I'll leave it at that. If you guys enjoy the content, please feel free to share, like, subscribe. You can always support the patron. Um, I, I'm coming up in 15 minutes. Eric Reitberg. Thanks, guys. It's aggravating. Yes, I'm aggravated by this. Call it what it is. I blame media in large part, in a lot, for allowing these wars to persist in the way these wars persist. We go from one horror to the next horror. And the media acts as if the last horror never took place or if the last horror was just a complete accident. So Obama goes in, destroys Libya. And despite all the evidence to the contrary showing that there was the potential that they use the humanitarian thing just purely as a fig leaf and a pretext in order to get Gaddafi out that seat. Media crickets, crickets. What happens? If on the media every other day they're talking about Libya and the fire and the dumpster fire that that country became based on Obama's action, what happens if media is saying, hey, how come you didn't do anything about Bush killing all those people and there were no weapons of mass destruction and we went into a country and killed all those people and there were no weapons of mass destruction and Bush was torturing me. If that was within the public consciousness where the public cared about it and the media didn't necessarily let that die down because there wasn't a consequence. Do you honestly believe that these people would be able to propagate these wars in the way that they've been able to propagate these wars in a foreign policy? If foreign policy was a thing that the media was focusing on, especially from the standpoint of the failures and the fuck-ups and the fires that we've been setting all across the world, do you honestly believe that the administration would be able to persist in the way that they've been persisting? My point to this is media is complicit and media allows the propagation of these wars because they don't do any necessarily thing to challenge these things. If anything, they allow this kind of narrative to form up that justifies the, the, the foreign policy or the, you could say, the aggressive foreign policy. Donald Trump fires an illegal missile in Syria. In 2017, Mathis comes out and says, yeah, we have no idea who released the chemical weapons. And yet and still, Donald Trump fires a missile strike in Syria. You would think that the president of the United States would know if somebody did something before the president of the United States fires a military strike at that person. At no point did anybody on CNN ask, was it legal? At no point did somebody say, well, wait a minute, is this in America's vital interests? Or is Syria a direct threat to us? What of the Constitution allows us to willy-nilly strike another country in this particular way? None of these things were asked. The media looked at this and said, this is the first time that Donald Trump seems presidential. 
as he's essentially throwing the Constitution into the river. I'll leave it at that. This one has gone long enough. All right, guys. If you enjoy the content, please feel free to share, like, subscribe, and of course, you can always support the Patreon. Thanks, guys.